Hello, my name is Tia Welling, and please like and subscribe to this page, and more, much, many more to come. I'm probably going to be doing, bringing up a lot of my artwork that I have created, my collages and such, and making explanation videos about them so that others can actually understand what I'm trying, or at least attempting to try to understand. Over the last week, week and a half, two weeks, I have been into a sequence of ideas that kind of coalesced into a sequence of previous ideas that also spawned their own ideas and such. So let's begin. The information that I'm going to be presenting to you is a very complex sequence of events which coalesce into a sequence of actions that in a basically in, in an interesting way led to the creation of the United States of America. Which subject to begin with? Okay. I have a couple friends who live in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, that's not entirely accurate. I have a couple friends who live in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, which is just to the east of Tulsa. In Broken Era, Oklahoma, there is some there's there's people there that that live their life and do their thing that happen to be outside of the cultural norms for what people do in Tulsa, Tulsa, Tulsa Metroplex, Oklahoma, and the Bible Belt. They actually live their life according to other rules, other regulations, other ways of being, other ways of existing. Um, any kind of moral judgments, that's not what this video is about. What this video is about is taking academic and religious ideas and, and looking and examining them in a different way, examining them, examining, examining them through a different filter, a different field of perspective. Through, through our interactions with these two people, my brain did what it's what did its thing, and I my brain went the Mississippi. The Mississippi River has two um, primary uh, major rivers that dump into it on the west side. That would be the Arkansas River. To the southern, to a little bit southerly, and the Mississippi, the Missouri, to the north. The so let's let's examine this evidence of the Mississippi and the, the Missouri and the Arkansas, and of course the Rio Grande right way over there across on the other side of, of a of a bit of mountains. So we have. So we have the application of those rivers that literally create a character very, very similar to that of Shin. Shin, one third and two thirds, and of course the the, the now this symbol, this hand hand position, you can't you can't find less than one or two hundred thousand pieces of, the, of those of that art in the first five hundred five centuries of the the Christian Catholic Church formulation. So from about thirty forty A.D. up to three four five hundred A.D., you it's very difficult to, to find that as not as a, a as a one of the primary aspects of some of the apostles' work. So. Let's go with this symbol. Let's go with this concept, okay? Shin, the Hebrew shin, which you can see in the in the image here. So we have the Hebrew shin, and years and years and years ago, I did the mathematics and ma mapped the character of Hebrew shin onto the Khufu pyramid, and the ma mathematics were so accurate that it was a yeah. This is the, the it's difficult to statistically have a chance that big, since, especially since there are a large number of, of architectural and other 
designs that were built into both Judaism and Christianity that are focused in on the character of Shin. The Khufu Pyramid is just one of them, one of hundreds, possibly more that I, that I haven't seen yet. So I knew that the character of Shin and the character and the application of the shape of the character of Shin and those three rivers were relatively pretty close. And as you can see in the graphic, they are more than relatively pretty close. There's, there's more than a, metaphorically, they're almost dead on the money. Non-metaphorically, they are uh, academic wise, mathematical wise, they are about what if you want to get really really strict about it it's about 65 70 75 percent dead on the money match and if you want to um but in actuality it's about overall picture you can see where the the the, the rivers those three rivers well some my four rivers and the and the character of shin match well since i didn't since i, since I first did the the character the architectural design of Khufu so that's Khufu and Shin and Matt matched onto the onto those rivers which those rivers perform in the early stages of the formulation and the civil and the settling the wet eastern the the western culture settling of the American continent there was a <sighs> There were several cultures vying for domination. The cultures that were here first, who had really, really good negotiations, really good morals and ethics and such with the natives, and the natives did what their, th their thing, and the British and the French and such did their thing, and everyone was, was cool and copacetic. Then the English and the Italians and the Spanish and the Prussians got involved, and um, mass murder, genocide on spec for the next several centuries. In fact, in some places in America, lynching a, an African-American person is only mildly illegal, and the, 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 police, the police and the courts just simply say, oh, okay, we'll just, we'll just chuck this one up to another suicide, despite the fact that there's no evidence for, to, to back that up. But, um, there's an entire political movement right now going on about Black Lives Matter. This that, that is in part that is an about um, an eighth to a quarter about this very subject about how law enforcement and citizens, friends of the law enforcement, uh, are inappropriate with African Americans and natives, and very very little is done about it. So there's a there's a, a five century pattern to the to these behaviors. So we have physical tangible evidence of why this specific information was hidden, destroyed, and purposely erased from, from knowing about it is because the information is it, it comes back to a war, a violent, violent war between the ministry of Jesus and the ministry of Paul. Paul's people from day one have been completely interested and completely devoted to and look for reasons to be violent and commit mass murder. I will give you some references to the church of Paul committing mass murder and then bragging about it. I'll be happy to, no problem. The witch burning times, which happened between about two, three-ish, 100 B, 180, up until 1810. The last couple were done in the, in the late 1790s, and uh, two or three or four were done, documented. A couple of uh, victims of the Inquisition were dispatched in the, from 1801 to 1810, 1806, somewhere in there. So there's more than plenty of evidence to, to point to piles and piles and piles of mass murdered and genocided bodies from the Catholic Church and the Protestant churches. So this is not, there's, there's too much evidence to say that this is not in, in serious question. 
I mean, in serious, um, this is a serious amount of evidence that can't be ignored. What it, the question becomes: Why did the the, the, the begat of, Peter, of Paul, not Peter, Paul, want to kill and want and want need and desire to mass murder to make sure that they have the only voice around and their 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 philosophy of the workings of Jesus and the workings of, of the church were without question and they would be happy to mass murder any any group that questioned their authority for almost 2,000 years. Even today, there's still, even to this very minute, there's battles going on between the forces of Paul and, and the current, the current, the current leader of the church of Paul and his followers are more than happy to be violent. In fact, they usually have to be talked out of being violent. And the murders and such that have happened in the last in the last days, weeks, months are further evidence of that. And the body body count is hundreds, if you or if you want to want to count for thousands in association. But that's not the point. The followers of Jesus, on the other hand had a different church, different philosophy, and they had been almost under siege quite literally the, for, the, for every single solitary minute of the last 2,000 years. The, the, the major problem involved in this situation is, is that the begat of Paul, like destroying evidence, like destroying documents, like destroying that kind of stuff, and the begat of Simon Peter are the opposite. Let's carry forward to the to the country and the establishment of the modern, the semi-modern, the, the medieval France. 1450, 1460, 70, somewhere in that was when it began with the life and beginning career of a man by the name of Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci spent his life in secret, hiding from the Italian authorities and the Vatican, who desperately, 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 at about 4,000 more desperately to that, wanted to kill him and tried on numerous occasions. They publicly uh, put in, uh, accused him of various assorted crimes and put him on trial three separate times. And the, la and the last one, he was spent a, about a decade or so under house arrest in the Vatican, so the Pope could keep the Pope's could keep an extremely strict strict watch over his actions and activities. Now he was under house arrest, which means that he can go he can go from from place to place and and still interact and do what he needed to do. But the Vatican had a guard next had a guard a couple feet away from him in the same room always. If he did anything that they didn't like, they'd kill him. With or without the, the permission of the, of the French king, who had an army on the border and informed the Pope several times, if you do anything to our boy at all, we invade, and this time we have a really good battle plan because we're following his battle plan to the to the T to a T, and you will not win. The only reason why you didn't win between the between 1492 and 1497 is because the um, the arrogant, narcissistic, and not very good person, not a very good king, decided I know better than the, than the guy who has a 300 IQ. I know better. I have a better battle plan. So instead of instead of taking my Rome, my army to Rome, and conquering the city of Rome, I'm going to take my, my army way, way 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 south to Naples and conquer that city, and 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 just be and just put feathers feathers in my cap that I'm the greatest of the greatest of the greatest, and everything's going to be wonderful. Well, 18 months later, he was executed for being a total moron. Leonardo da Vinci was arrested and put under put under house arrest, where he spent under house arrest from about eighteen from about fourteen ninety six seven eight somewhere there, up to fifteen twelve when he was finally released and exiled because the French king came down to the Vatican negotiated to for for Leo's release and as well as other things, and then under extreme guard escorted him back to back to to France where he promptly disappears from the history books even though he uh, he was looking at living on the king's private estate at the time well the king had about 20 private estates 
Versailles being one of them, but Versailles was not known by the overwhelming majority of anyone for another hundred years. So there was a, a thing revolving around that whole concept and that whole situation regarding the Leonardo da Vinci and where he was and no one knowing where he was. Well, mathematically, I got a pretty good idea where he was because no matter how old you are, you're not going to be able to stop being what the, what he was. If you're creative and, and intuitive, uh, and creative and and artistic and ma a mathematician, a a a master craftsman, a master artist, a a master mathematician, and such, you're never going to stop being able to, to do those those ideas. It doesn't work to just sit in front of the fire and be entertained and not have your mind go. Um, uh, this this specific aspect was illustrated very very nicely in the pilot of a TV show called Scorpion, where Ralph is the character of Ralph, who's a nine ten ish year old boy. He's he's at his mother's um, diner at his mother's job, who she is a waitress, and he's leaning against against the counter doing this thing on the counter. And he is apparently staring at the clock. Well, his mother comes up and says, oh, don't worry. It's only just a few more minutes, Ralph. It'll be OK. And the, the fictional character of Sly comes up to two pages and says, actually, he is not paying attention to the clock at all. He is not thinking about the clock. He is measuring the, the, the thermal dynamic variables of, of the room measuring how, how quickly the temperature the ambient temperature will either go up or go down based on the the wind patterns he's measuring the wind patterns the the wind, the wind speeds he's measuring the 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 surface tension of the the clock um or he is doing a variety of other things in his head he couldn't care less about the clock because the clock is annoying he's right he'd rather think about other things well that's very very accurate to someone like Leonardo da Vinci. Your mind never stops working. You never your mind never stops going. Hum! I have an idea. My mind is doing something. Measuring the heat distribution of the fire. Um, if someone is around you doing something or talking or communicating with you, you're measuring the the word there. You're measuring the words coming out of their mouth with the words they previously said and then creating a database of information in your head about what they say and how they say it and what they mean. You're measuring, you're identifying the, the movement, their movements and going, okay, there's about, there's about 18 inches between the, the feet now. And he just switched stances and that went up to about 24 inches. And now it's, now it's still only, only six inches. And okay, he's, he, the person's walking away now. So there's two and a half feet per, per stride, which is interesting. So that's, this is how, how they think. This is how they process information. Now, to carry on with this, this information, when Leonardo da Vinci was a, ch was a teenager, a child, he was given the ability to, and the, pro and the, and the, and the aspect of, he impressed his father, who then communicated with his buddies, the, the Medici, who then were massively impressed, who then, uh, this child, this, this toddler, late toddler, early child, um, started to become a, a prodigy. He started to, he started to become a show, a circus size show, despite the fact that those things really hadn't, didn't exist yet. And Everyone came from a long, time, long, long distance around to be able to see what the, the marvels that this kid could do now. His paintings, his artwork, his sculpture, although he wasn't very good at his sculpture. Uh, his uh, ideas, his mathematics, the, the languages that he was, he was accustomed to. He could speak multiple languages when he, was a, when he was a young child. And so the there's a there's an, a, a battle event that he overheard one day during one of these sessions and he piped up the, this you know out of the mouths of babes type situation he his he piped up and he gave advice to someone there that that advice was was then handled and dealt with and his advice uh saved many many people and counteracted countered an invasion 
of Italy in some way or in France in some way, shape, and form. Well, as a reward, he was given a couple thousand acres 12 miles east of, uh, west of, of Paris, France, as a reward. For, you know, it's like, hey, thank you for saving my life. Appreciate that. How, what can I do to repay you? Here's a couple thousand acres. Everything's cool. So he was, he was, but he couldn't, in Italy, he was not allowed to own land because he was, he was half Jewish his, on his mother's side, which means he was Jewish. It's very difficult to learn language in the medieval ages, especially in the 1400s. It's 300 times harder than that, 400 times, 500 times harder than that if you want to learn Hebrew. You best know a Jew or be very, very closely associated with a Jew or the descendant from a Jew in order to be able to learn Hebrew because Hebrew wasn't exactly that high, high on the list of things that, that were acceptable to learn at that time. Language being you know, against heresy laws still at that point, so learning how to read was a big, huge deal. Learning how to read Latin was a maybe, maybe, maybe possible, okay, kind of sort of if, you pay, if your family pays the fines. Learning other languages were no, 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 and he, learning Hebrew was semi-close to, to a capital crime. So he knew Hebrew. So he took all these bits and pieces of knowledge and all these bits and pieces of, of information. And he said, okay, King of France, other leaders, King of King of Eng, King of Anglo Sax of, of Mercia lands in Anglo Saxia, King of Northumberland, all these kings and rulers and such. Okay, this is the plan. This is the, I have a plan. This is a adolescent going into preteen boys. I've got a plan. And by this time, he is his more than earned his medal. He's he, they, most of them consider him an equal, if not superior, because he's smarter than they are. So I've got a plan. What we're going to do is we know we have to destroy the Trojan palaces in on the island of the city in Paris. We know we have to do this because that was the part of the agreement from the Vatican. So the Vatican ex expects us to, to, to take down the tabernacle system that was created. The now the just the just about to be the, the mostly finished Notre Dame, the building that is to that is directly to the side to the side of it, and then the the major pal palace complexes on the other side of the island that are also in, in in twin tower pairs. Well, this one's been rebuilt, and this one's been partially partially destroyed and going to be rebuilt, and this as do several other different buildings. The buildings over there have to be destroyed, but we need to build. Do the do what those buildings did someplace else. So, I have a plan. This is what we're going to do. We are going to build a backup capital in Paris, twelve miles west, and we'll use my land, no problem. But we're going to for the first two hundred years of its existence, from fourteen eighty to sixteen eighty, it will be. A school, and we're going to call it Polytechnic College. We're going to call it a Polytechnic College, although in in Polytechnic College in in in, in OC French translates to verse I. A verse is a verse a a in the Bible. Verse Genesis one one. Well, that is a that that sentence is a defined thing. That defined thing has actions associated. So that defined thing is a verse, is a physical, tangible thing. So you have a thing. I L. So you have B E R S E. Well, then you have I L L E S, which is o, o, which is O C French for many islands or many isolated things. So you have, or otherwise known as poly or plural. So you have technical things and you have so you have te uh, technical things which is te technology you have technical so you have technical and you have many things so you have and then you flip them around and you have many islands I, I L L E S verse verse islands so you have Versailles, 
Versailles literally translates to Polytechnic College. So for the first 200 years of, years of this college's existence, which was entirely clandestine, it was a mostly it was a spy headquarters that taught spies how to do things, but it was also a, a Q branch, if you understand the James Bond reference, a Q branch of MI5, MI6, and it was designed to have people have deserving people come learn secretly. Many many females, many non-deserving, non-air students. If you had a brain, you're, you're welcome. A lot of, many of the very limited number of schools in Europe at the time, if your family didn't have a whole bunch of money or you weren't royalty or you were had massive political connections in some way, your kids were not going to school at all. You had to teach them by yourself and if you didn't could not afford to teach them by yourself, then Sorry, Charlie, you're out of luck. So Da Vinci said, I have a plan. So he was going to make a polytechnic school at Versailles, which he did, achieved fantastically, brilliantly. He made a copy of that, of that school in what would be called in the future New Orleans. He made another copy of it in a place called St. Louis, which was named after literally Saint, the King, King of France, St. Louis, who was declared a saint, a saint hundred, more than several centuries ago. And you had the super, 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 super secret uh, backup, backup capital for the French government, and that would be in a place that is now called Bancroft Park, in a place called Carter Springs. Now, it did not take around the name Bancroft Park until after 1885, because the guy it was named after didn't ha, had not do, done anything important or interesting until th at that point, so it was named after him as an as a as a desperate the the government of Carter Springs was very desperate, including General Palmer was very 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 desperate to remove that infrastructure from his city, and he would not accept it, so therefore it needed to be destroyed. So the first the first thing to go was the was the name of the of the area. The second thing to go was the majority of the building, although they did leave a cor a small corner of the building, and they called it the Bancroft School, which lasted for a couple of decades before that that building too was erased from erased from existence, minus a couple of pictures that were taken, and of course the entire um, um, foundation and basement because I've seen it when I was a ch when I was so oh, somewhere between. Eight and eleven, I saw at least once. I saw the the foundation because they the the work crew were doing work in the area. They dug up they dug up a bunch of gra uh, ground to the to the right from from Carter Avenue, of course, for the, with the Carnegie building, Carnegie Library behind, and to the to the side, to the left side. They were digging. They did a, did a bunch of of digging stuff up, and they the the building's foundation is still there, and it stretches way. Under the road <coughs> toward Carter Springs and way under the road to the other side, so it's that building with footprint is actually wider than Bancroft Park by a few dozen feet, if not more. So that was the super, super, super secret capital in a place called Bancroft Park. Now, if you'll notice in the graphic, the middle finger of this situation is of the Arkansas River. Well, that Arkansas River goes after, after it spills, before it spills into the Mississippi, in the bottom part of the portion of the Mississippi, it goes through Oklahoma specifically. It is the, the river that, that, that Tulsa was built around. Well, Tulsa, in this specific case, as, as I said in, as I said in a previous video, the, the city of Tulsa began as a city of as a city of pillars. That city of pillars, of course, was is a city was a city that was in direct sequence with the writings, teachings, and aspects of the of Jesus Christ, as chronicled by the Saint Mark, whoever that was. I have some theories as to who who Saint Mark actually was. Now, to continue on, to continue with the city of pillars. Itself go stretches from 
The first city of pillars on, on documented record is the city of Herculopolis. And you have Memphis, and of course you have IWNW, which is actually older, but there's almost no, nothing left of the city of IWW. There's a, at least a few centuries, if not a thousand years older than the city of, of Her Herculopolis, although there's extremely difficult to find evidence because the post holes were dug into, into, into rock, and rock has an extremely difficult time holding on to records unless there's something written onto it. It's just basic stuff left behind. It's incredibly difficult to find any kind of evidence whatsoever. The pulse holes are, are obvious because they're, they're, they're carefully measured out, carefully the, all, all the same parameters to each of the pulse holes, and the pulse holes are the exact the same distances from each other as you would expect from the kind of buildings that were put on to there. So you have city pillars. Well, you have, and you have Troy, and you have Carthage, and you have several other, other ma major cities of pillars. And then you have the two cities of pillars in and, out of Rome, in, in and out of Rome proper. You have one where the Colosseum is now, and you have another one where the uh, approximately, give or take the area of where the Pantheon is, is in the present, because the pan, although the Pantheon is originally was actually a, a different temple on the city of pillars. But anyway, there's a bunch of stuff with Nero in the first century and this, the residents of the city of pillars, which is where the Colosseum is now, were forced to either evac or die. So they had to evac or die. And this goes to a very special friend in Tulsa, where part of the, part of the, understanding for this came, came from we, we were talking about some of her ideas and such and this so part of this idea rolled from that those conversations and the so when Nero attacked and destroyed the city of pillars where the Colosseum is now they evacuated and where, where they evacuated to was in part they regrouped at the city of Venice Creating the recreating the same exact design that had been in existence before, but this time as a as a more permanent structure, as a more permanent uh, city. So the city of Venice was born from the city from the, the architecture of pillars. Well, there's also there's all, several of the buildings in Paris were also cities of pillar were also built, buildings built on pillars and, and the like as well as a portion of New Orleans, a portion of Boston, a portion, a portion of the original New York, uh, New York City, although what it had, it's had at least three name changes. Whatever it was called before the Dutch invaded in 1630 and named, renamed it New Amsterdam. And then when a, either an ancestor or a cousin of mine, Captain Henry Ogle with his fleet arrived the Dutch immediately surrendered and handed over the the island the island back to the to the British. The the Captain Henry Ogle um, chose to rename the the island in favor of of a relative of his, the Duke of York, as in New York. Boston and and New Smyrna Beach and the, there's other. Uh, Aspects of the city of St. Augustine are also, St. Augustine, Florida, are also a strong portion of the city of Pillars design. So you have lots and lots of copies of Venice, although co Venice itself is a, is a copy of a dozen previous cities. You have all this stuff happening and going on. And with all this stuff, all this other stuff going on, you also have a considerable amount of, of mapping going on. So Leonardo da Vinci between 1460, 1465-ish, up until the, 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 the Sistine Chapel was finished painting, he had ideas and he, he, had, he had concepts. So one of the things that he convinced the Pope to do was to dismantle the south outer wall of the Colosseum because it, was, it had partially collapsed anyway and was completely unstable because there, there's, there's actually water underneath there. It's, it, that the Colosseum is one quarter fully on fill dirt, the rest of it's on, on hard, uh, the portions of the semi-submerged um, 
uh, Esquiline Hill, one of the one of its satellites, the one of the saddles, not satellites, satellite, one of its saddles, the, the the that portion of at least a quarter to half of the Colosseum sits on that on that bedrock. The rest of it sat on fill dirt. So he had the he convinced the Pope to dismantle the, the dismantle those bricks all the way, just not not let it collapse in on itself, but actually dismantle it, moved it to the appropriate location and built and out of its materials built the Sistine Chapel with exactly precise mathematics because if you draw a line from the outermost southern edge of the outer wall of the, of the Colosseum through the middle of the Arch of Titus through partially the middle of the Roman the Roman Forum uh, splitting the, splitting the uprights of the of the Capitoline Hill the Temple of Juno and the Temple of J Jupiter, you split you split those uprights, and you semi bypass the 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 St. Peter's Basil Basilica and Square, and you go you head straight into the side of the wall of the Sistine Chapel. Well, if you go a little bit farther, then you go to the very dead center of the wall, of the middle of the wall of the Sistine Chapel, which was built. Which was painted while he, while Leonardo da Vinci was in exile in the Vatican. A beyond master, a legendary master painter, is under house arrest for tenish eleven years, so he has to do something. So might as well get, put him to work to paint. And part of his 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 punishment is that he has to give the credit to Michelangelo, who who also was in trouble because of his proclivities, and because he was in trouble because of his proclivities. He was being punished for okay. You're going to have to okay. This person, this is the person going to paint it. You're not a painter. You hate painting. You have anything to do with painting. This person is going to is you're you're going to have to put your name on their, th this other person's work because you did you did cardinal sins that you should be capital punished for according to the, to the laws of that specific time. And Leo did equal equal punishments and such that he need deserves to be to be. To have capital punishment performed upon him, but since they couldn't, since the Vatican couldn't kill either of the, these two men, or and, and not face very very difficult and nasty consequences, they were metaphorically, artistically killed. The the work this 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 person did, this person ha, was forced to claim, which is academically close to the worst thing you could possibly do. So we have those rivers and you have shin naturally built into the built as a reflection of those rivers now the next item up for bid is that the sistine chapel all the skulls the skull the skull bone and all the skulls that are that are listed are fixed points so if you if you play the three-year-old's game of connect the dots you can literally make the entire hebrew character hebrew alphabet based off of the skulls that are that are Drawing a line from this skull to that skull to that skull to that skull, you make LF. B E T. There's there's the entire Hebrew alphabet is in those skulls, including Shin. And Shin, as we as we have semi-established mathematically, is the character that was that was in existence at the time, but just not written down. The character of Shin. Or written down in a permanent format. The character of Shin is in the the, the the west wall of the Sistine Chapel. Knowing that the west that the that the character Shin is there, I want to do a I wanted to do it and did a cross comparison between the character of Shin and the the um, of course the 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 Hebrew um, the uh, the Khufu pyramid. I want to do a cross comparison between Shin. The pyramid and those rivers to see to see if there was mathematically any constants going on here. Well, wowie, wowie, wow, wow, wow. Yes, there are major constant uh, constants. Oh my God, there's major constants. And the ones that are not major constants, uh, c continuations of, of the same mathematical formulas. The ones that are not are metaphorically close enough. So you have a lot happening. Okay? There's also the concept of Rome, because you have Shin in built into the infrastructure of the, of the 
of the Roman Forum. You have the Capitoline Hill. You have the Palatine. You have the Palatine Hill, portion of the Palatine Hill, and you have the middle of the, the middle of the Forum. To the, 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 this line is a little thicker with a with a big huge uh, with a, with a big huge this a huge uh, mark on it. You have a very thin line and then a big, another big, huge mark. Well, that would be the middle of the forum to the Temple of Venus, which is just before the, the, the Colosseum. You have this one over here, the Escaline. So you have the big, huge Escaline line and hill. You have the Roman, for, the, the Roman Forum and then the Vilia Hill. And then you have the Valentine Hill. Right there, mathematics, black and white. So now about 10 -ish years ago, 10, give or take 10 years ago, I figured out, no, about eight years ago, I figured out that the, the Khufu pyramid was what King Solomon's temple was based off of. Because you had the subterranean chamber, which is the NEA. You have the the queen's the queen's chamber, which is an FC, and then you have the the master, then you have the the burial chamber, and all masons should know exactly what burial chamber is being discussed and talked about. You have the burial burial chamber for master mason. So with all this stuff going on, with all this massive amount of stuff going on, the mathematical constants between the Khufu Pyramid and Shin and the West Wall of the Sistine Chapel and Da Vinci, which I didn't even get, I could go on for hours about what Da Vinci did and didn't do. Um, amazing amounts of work that he did, including making three, possibly four backup capitals for the for for Paris because the Prussians were coming and the Prussians were going to come hard and they were going to come to mass murder and genocide anyone who stood in their way. So Da Vinci saw this coming and said, "Okay, we need to we, we need a backup we need a backup capital, then we need a backup of the backup capital, then we need a backup of the backup of the backup, and then we so on and so forth." So you have now that backup capital. Speaking of Tulsa, that backup capital needed castle defenses. They did, the, the, the 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 that the Marie Antoinette, her husband Louis, evacuated. There's not the the, the it's pure fiction to assume that the body doubles for the royal family who were captured were actually them. Okay, here's the facts of the case. Can you imagine Porthos, Hermes, and D'Artagnan? Can you imagine the three musketeers fourth allowing the French royal family to evacuate east, heading to heading to, to Germany, Prussia? Now they were they were in their full royal garb. They were in their best, most expensive carriage. Their horses were in full regalia. Their guards were in, in, in full regalia costume, and they stopped for water and to rest the horses in a in a city that would have been a, been a Prussian stronghold for the pre previous several centuries. So they stop in the middle of the city to pick up supplies and water, water and, and and rest the horses, and they are arrested like five seconds later. Well. They were arrested because they were in in, in full ro ro royal garb, and in the, in the best of the best of what they what they had, which is fine and dandy, but it also means that the the oh we captured the royal family, pure fiction. What actually happened was the body doubles were captured, and the bodies double did exactly what they were what they were paid to do, and their families were paid to do, and that was to pretend they were the actual royals until. They were they were either released, let go, or they were disposed of. Now, to continue on with this with this situation, you also have a lot of so the the the, the real royals evacuated. They they couldn't go to New Orleans because that was that had been a, a Prussian stronghold for at least a century. They couldn't go to St. Louis because there was no way to get to St. Louis and not trip up spies. When spies find out, they said assassins and said assassins. Relieve you of your mortal coil. So they had to go to the to the backup of the backup, which would be what would be called in, in more than a century the um, the palace in the in what is now called Bancroft Park, 
the palace was was obliterated in between 18, 1850 and 1870. That palace was almost entirely obliterated, leaving it only a small corner, and that was remodeled to make it not look like what it was. So you have to have fortifications around the primary residence in order to be able to ensure the king's safety and survival. Well, Tulsa would be one of the places that was a major city that was created in order to be able to protect the French king in, in exile. So you have the French king in exile, and you have a, a ring of cities around the, the French king. And those cities were our castles slash fortifications designed to make sure the king doesn't does not die of unnatural causes, and is and has has a rather severe to extreme problem. Well, that's portions of what's going on here. This is part one. Many more to go. There's there's all kinds of th things that I that I did not talk about and I and I missed, but. That's in another part, which um, I hope you'll stay tuned and pay attention to. Thank you so much and subscribe to the page and, and like my, my posts and such.